In this Great Lakes prepping video, I'm experimenting with creating an entire dehydrated meal in a jar. Basically, what I want to try is dehydrating all these vegetables, adding in some rice, some spices, sealing them in a jar, and then from scratch making a really nice soup with nothing but uh, my uh, dehydrated ingredients, some water, and a little bit of meat. Now, uh, full disclosure, I intended to make this video using rabbit meat because, frankly, uh, if there's some kind of issue uh, in getting fresh meat, I can always get fresh rabbit meat. But because I don't have any right now and I want to make this video and not go rabbit hunting, I decided to use a Cornish game hen instead. So. I gotta use my imagination a little bit, but pretty confident that it'll work just about the same um, using a fresh rabbit. So I'm gonna get all these vegetables into the dehydrator and then we're gonna go from there. Uh, normally I put a lot more uh, stuff on each one of these trays. I usually don't run my dehydrator unless I fill it up, but since this is kind of an experiment, I'm just putting only what I need uh, for this for this meal in a jar in my dehydrator. So I'm going to start with the carrots. And some mushrooms. Spread those out. fresh spinach. Um, this should actually dehydrate a little bit quicker since I'm not putting a whole lot of stuff in the machine. My uh, Excalibur machine can handle a lot more than this, but it's going to be a pretty easy one for it. Uh, I picked my vegetables based on the things I like, but also What's going to give me a lot of different uh, nutrients and vitamins and all that good stuff, hence the, uh, the spinach. Once that dehydrates, it's going to crumble down into basically just little flakes, but uh, it's going to still go really nice in the soup and uh, might even help thicken it up a little bit. <coughs> Celery. Um, and I had some fresh, or some, rather some frozen vegetables in the freezer that uh, might as well use so there's about half a bag of uh, green beans cut up green beans and about half a bag of frozen peas these are always good in anything those are going to roll all around when I try to move this but that's okay Finally, corn. This is this is from a can, but it's gonna work out just fine. All right. All right. We got the Excalibur dehydrator all loaded up with uh, with all my vegetables. I'm gonna turn this thing on and wait. I don't know. Probably about eight hours. Alright, like I said, um, I'm going to use a Cornish hen for the uh, protein in this since I don't have a rabbit on hand. So, um, since it's going to take a little while, uh, I'm going to get the, the stock going um, before I start dealing with my dehydrated vegetables. Alright, there we got the, the chicken in a pot of water. We're going to let that uh, start, start cooking here. Uh, now, of course, the entire point of this experiment is to see if I can get everything except for the protein into a single mason jar sealed and ready to use. So of course that means I'm going to be doing certain things out of order from how I would normally make soup. You know things are kind of happening uh, rather than um, certain ingredients in a certain order at different times. Um, 
everything's going to be in the jar, so we have to do this kind of uh, more uh, simplistic. So after the stock is ready and the meat's been pulled off the bone, then everything from the jar is going to go in here. Alright, so uh, here's one of my trays of dehydrated vegetables. This is the half a bag of frozen green beans. Sure doesn't look like much once you dehydrate it, but after they get rehydrated, it should be just fine. So what I'm going to do now is uh, sort of dump each tray into, uh, into the jar. First I'm going to kind of get it onto this paper plate so it's more easy to maneuver into the jar. Um, then I'm just going to layer up all the stuff that I want in there. Alright, first in, got the green beans. After that, celery. It's ridiculous how just bizarre and, and shriveled something like that gets and it'll rehydrate pretty well but man this was this was about three full stalks of celery Get that in there I'm thinking I could have probably used just a little bit more of each vegetable, but that's all right. I guess we have a bunch of different ones to to fill out this soup. And like I said, this is an experiment. If it looks like I should have put more vegetables in, then that's that, I know that for next time. And that's why we do these things. The corn. Just a little spinach. Now these are just gonna crumble up pretty much as soon as I put them in that jar. So I'm just gonna go right in here with that anyway. I guess I could do it this way with all of them. Those are just gonna crumble right into into little shreds as soon as I start putting another stuff on top of it. I think I've got a couple of uh, full jars of nothing but spinach flakes. It's incredible how much spinach it took to fill an entire mason jar. Here's the peas. Oh boy. These were rolling all over the place. I run my dehydrator in the basement rather than the kitchen because the sound of it upsets my dog as does just about every other sound in the world. So. She doesn't like the rattling and the whirring of the motor, so I lug the thing in the basement and then back up when it's when it's done. Cause she's spoiled. Mushrooms, those are looking good. And then carrots. Again, this was about two and a half pretty, pretty decent sized carrots right here. Put that in there. So that's what we got so far. It looks pretty cool. Now I had some uh, a jar of dehydrated onion already, and I'm just going to use some of these. The reason I didn't put another tray in here full of onion is because if you've ever dehydrated onions, you know this, but it will stink up your entire house forever. So if you're gonna do onion, you gotta put the dehydrator outside while it goes. And I put mine in my garage when I did this jar, and that was a mistake. My entire garage smelled like just, just absolute horrors for the better part of a year. I can't even believe how long the smell stuck around. So since I have so many dehydrated already, I'm just gonna go ahead and use some of these. Uh, it's you know, hard to get a gauge of how much you want once they're already dried, but uh, that seems like a good amount. Seems like about a tray's worth. 
I like onion anyway, so if it's a little much, that's fine. All right, next thing I'm going to add is uh, a little bit of spices and herbs and other uh, flavorings. Um, again, I'm really just kind of winging this. Um, I don't like to use a lot of salt in the stuff I make these days. Um, but I'm going to add just a few twists to this grinder in there. Um, and uh, I already ground some, some fresh black pepper onto this plate, so I'm going to dump that in. That's probably enough. Um, you know, I, I wasn't sure how, if I wanted to put garlic in this dehydrator right now either. Kind of like the onions is probably going to stink everything up. So I decided I'm just going to use just a little bit of garlic powder in there. I think that'll be good. Um, parsley. I always like some parsley when I'm making a, a soup like this. So I'll just put, I'll just put one, maybe one and a half teaspoons in there. And then finally, my uh, my my broth base and seasoning. Um, I I tend I, oops let me get that down there. I tend to use this um, instead of bouillon cubes. Um, I don't know. I just like it. I took uh, I took this brand on, as a recommendation from another um, YouTube channel. Now I have the I have the ham base, the beef base, and the the chicken base. They've all been great. I've made some really good soups with all of them. So. You know, I usually put two huge tablespoons of this stuff in when I'm making a really large pot of something. This isn't going to be an, an enormous pot, so I'm really just going to get maybe, I don't know, I guess a couple of teaspoons in there. Maybe not quite two teaspoons, but I think that's going to be good. All right, and the last thing I'm adding to the jar is some regular white rice. Um, I actually have I have lots of this uh, in jars stored up, and as you can see, this is some that I uh, sealed in 2014, and um, I I still use this this same batch of rice regularly, and it's as good as the day I put it in there. And I have no reason to expect that it won't be good for several more years. Oh yeah. Uh, I don't know exactly how much to put in here. I, I want to say a, a half a cup. I might end up kind of taking over the soup at that much, so I'm going to put just a little less than half a cup in here. Maybe just about, just about that much. Now I was thinking about putting beans in here, or even um, you know some kind of noodle. Um, maybe even some barley. Got some really good barley right here. I was thinking about putting in there, but uh, you know, for this kind of a soup, it's gonna be even with rabbit, it's gonna be more reminiscent of like a chicken soup, and I think rice works better for that. So that's where the that's where I'm gonna get the carbs for this particular batch. All right, really the last step before actually using this stuff in my soup would be to seal it with the food saver. Now, I don't really need to do that since I'm going to be using this today to make the soup. But just uh, in the name of going through the entire process and, and also kind of showing you what it would all look like, if you're not familiar with one of these food saver jar attachments, they're really cool. All of my dried goods are stored in mason jars and I use one of these attachments with with the vacuum sealer machine and it works really great and I'll show you that now That's it. Uh, to release the, the the attachment from the jar, I have to take the vacuum away by pulling the, the hose out, and then that just kind of twists right off. And now you've got a perfectly sealed sealed jar. So so that's my 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 meal in a jar right there. All it's missing is uh, protein and water. And once we get that 
uh, stock pretty much um, to a place where I want and that, that corner shine is cooked. I'm going to pull it out of there and, and we'll resume the video there. Alright, uh, we got the, the stock going here and I just finished uh, pulling off all the meat off of my uh, Cornish hen. I actually got a pretty good amount of meat off of that little guy. But before I put that back into the, the liquid, I'm going to add my dried ingredients because they're going to need a little while in this hot water to uh, rehydrate. And so I'm going to go ahead and just pour the whole jar in there right now, which is which is the whole point of this thing. Let's get the lid, lid off of there. You can just hear how well that, that food saver seals everything. So I got this, this water just at the, the point of boiling and I'm going to just pour everything on in. And we're back up there with the spinach. All right. Stir all that in. Once everything rehydrates, it's going to absorb a lot of that water, and this is going to thicken up quite a bit. Now, the, I didn't really measure out how much water I wanted to use because I don't really, you know, have a, an exact science for this. But basically, I put the Cornish hen in the in the pot and put enough water in to, to cover it and a lot of that uh, reduced down just from uh, simmering it for two hours but this is looking like a good a good amount of liquid here for the the dried ingredients so I'm just gonna let this go and keep stirring it here a little bit and uh, pick up the video uh, when these have rehydrated a bit more Well, it's been about 15 minutes or so, and uh, the vegetables are rehydrating pretty good. They still need a little ways to go. I just had a little sample of a carrot, and it was still uh, still a little bit chewy, so it needed a little more time. Uh, rice looks like it needs a little more time, too, but it's coming along pretty good. i got to say, as soon as I took the lid off, you can smell it. It smells really good, and uh, I guess... I guess I'm going to put the chicken back in um, just to get it warmed up and a few more minutes, I don't know, maybe another, I might give it another 20 minutes at least before I sample a little bit of it, but um, you know, with the chicken in there, it's looking to be pretty nice consistency. Uh, it'll thicken up just a little more as the rice and veggies absorb some more of that water, but it's going to be good, nice and thick. I'm excited to try it out. So, we'll come back in a few. Alright, while well, I've let this simmer probably about another 25 minutes, um, I think it needs just a little bit more time for everything to be you know, real soft and tender. I had a mushroom and it was probably about 90% there, but you know, I'm getting a little bit um, uh, antsy to try some of this so I can sample it and kind of wrap up this video. So I'm just going to get a little scoop out of here. It's looking really good. The consistency is really good. And the broth is looking nice. It smells delicious. So I'm going to have a little taste test and share my impressions. Alright, got a little little taste test going here. Um, you know, just you can see, uh, you know, see how well this, this corn rehydrated there. I mean, that was just a shriveled tiny little piece of nothing when it came out of the dehydrator. And you can see the spinach there. And nice piece of chicken. This, is, this looks pretty good. Mm. Tastes really good. You know, I've been trying to cook with uh, very little or no salt lately because of some blood pressure issues, but um, I still kind of crave the taste of it. And I really love the idea of shaking some Lowry seasoning salt or something in this just to make it a little saltier. But, you know, except for that, it's really good. 
And you can, of course, put as much salt or seasoning in there as you want. Um, I might put just a dash of that Lowry's in if I make this uh, again, but considering that this was all dehydrated just a hour ago, I see I got a little uh, little moocher hanging out waiting for a little taste of her own. She always gets a taste, don't worry. Um, considering that this came from a, a, a jar of dehydrated ingredients and there's, except for the chicken itself, there's there's no fat added to this. Now, of course, if I used rabbit, there'd be quite a bit less fat still because rabbit is so lean. Um, you know, I'd be tempted to throw a little bit of, of uh, oil or something in there just to give it some fat, but, you know, it's really good. Um, you know, if I was going to make soup from scratch with all fresh ingredients, um, I would generally uh, saute the, the onions and the uh, celery in some oil or butter and then, um, you know, kind of use that as the first step in, in, um, in making everything, but... Uh, Considering that I didn't do that and this all just was, was plain dried vegetables and rice, I'm really happy. I haven't really ever done a full-fledged uh, test run like this where everything, um, with the exception of the meat, is, is dehydrated first. I'm really, really happy with how it came out. You know, um, obviously... If I have the, the choice, I'm still going to make everything fresh, but if some situation arose where I couldn't get fresh ingredients, I'd feel like a king to, to have this for dinner because I know that other people out there wouldn't be nearly as lucky to have such a meal. So, you know, all in all, pretty good, pretty successful. So, I'm going to give the, the taste tester a sample there. Um, so yeah, let me know what you think, if you've tried anything similar. Um, now I want to try some other other versions uh, with dried ingredients, maybe a bean soup or something. And If I can get, get my hands on another rabbit anytime soon, maybe I'll make another update with, uh, with the real deal there. So, I guess that's it for now. Thanks for watching. Um, see you next time.